All right, guys. So today we're going over metabolic acidosis. So let's just hop right into it because the board is going to ask just one or two specific things about this. This is under the like less common things we would see, but important to know. So it's acidemia is happening in the body and that is due to a low blood pH. Remember normal blood pH range is 7.35 to 7.45. If it drops below that, we are going into an increased amount of like acid in the blood. The blood is becoming acidic. Essentially it's just a bunch of hydrogen ions are floating around. Um, and this is always going to occur secondary to some other disease. You do not get metabolic acidosis all by yourself does not magically appear. It's not like a just random thing that just happens all on its own. It's happening secondary to something else. So nine times out of 10, it's diabetes causing problems um, or any other condition that is going to increase or will decrease the pH of the blood, therefore increasing the acidity of the blood. So acidemia is acidic blood. So what is going to cause it? Let's kind of go through these things. So ketoacidosis, which is a complication following high blood sugar due to diabetes. So usually type two or type one, type one is like, comes up a lot with it. Um, but type two is more common that we would see, but can happen with either diabetes. Lactic acidosis, just an increased amount of lactic acid in the body that is causing the blood to become acidic. Um, kidney failure, because the kidneys are super important for a lot of function. If they're not working well and not filtering the blood well, we could have a backup of lots of hydrogen ions and lots of toxins in the body, which can cause acidosis. Alcoholism generally doesn't help anything. So that's one of the things that can cause this. Any sort of starvation. So that's either just like, you know, dietary starvation, scarcity of food, lack of eating, aversion of eating, or anorexia nervosa those can all throw off your blood pH, starting to tank it towards the acidosis. Um, poisoning, so it's kind of how rat poisoning works. It just like makes your body super acidic and then that's how you end up dying from metabolic acidosis. Uh, any sort of uncontrolled diabetes, which therefore would cause ketoacidosis. So that's kind of what's going on. Super high blood sugar due to diabetes is going to cause lots of problems with that. Severe diarrhea, that also can cause it. Um, we would see just like electrolyte imbalances. Um, just lots of problems with that. Um, overproduction or inadequate uh, excretion of hydrogen ions. So what do I mean by this? So we would see that this patient has, um, they're not, they're having like a buildup of hydrogen ions. So remember hydrogen ions will bond to like anything and then it will cause it to become more acidic. So remember our pH scale is determinant on how much hydrogen ions are in whatever substance we're looking at. If there's an increased amount of hydrogen ions, our pH is going to go down. If there is a le lesser amount of hydrogen ions, our pH is going to go up. Since there's a ton of hydrogen ions floating around, causing the pH to go down more acidic. That is why we're having problems with this. And then since we're not excreting bicarbonate ions, which would essentially be more basic kind of thing, um, we're going to not be balanced. So it's just too much acid in the blood. Um, what's going on with this person? They're gonna have lots of vomiting and diarrhea. So those problems are just like not good. So this is just things we'll see. Chest pain, headache abdominal pain, they'll have blurred vision, visual changes, tinnitus, so the ringing in their ears, hyperkalemia, so that is an increased amount of potassium in the body. Uh, we'll see some cardiac arrhythmias due to the problems with the too much um, potassium, because remember sodium, potassium, pump, car, calcium, all that stuff's going to cause cardiac arrhythmias, not good. General malaise, lethargy, fatigue, and then we'll see hyperventilation. So why are we seeing hyperventilation? Because the body is going to put itself into respiratory alkalosis. Watch that video. If you're confused on that, that'll explain everything further. Um, and so what's happening is the patient's hyperventilating. They're having tachypnea, which is an increased amount of respiration rates over, I believe it's like 18 uh, rates per minute. And so this becomes a medical emergency. As I said before, this is how rat poisoning works to kill you. Um, so if it's, it's fatal, if were left untreated, the person could go into a coma and die. So we need to make sure at they get the hospital, they're getting their arterial blood glass levels obtained, seeing where we're at with that, um, testing blood pH. That'll be a great way to figure out what's going on. And the patient's most likely going to be administered sodium bicarbonate because that acts as a base to kind of neutralize the amount of acid that's kind of forming up in the blood. And so we're essentially, well, not we, some medical person is going to be giving them sodium bicarbonate to decrease the level of acid in the blood because that is a base and bases neutralize acids. And so that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, 
for PT related, we're sending this person away to do something. We're just recognizing all of these symptoms being like, uh oh, not good. And then that's seeing that their blood pH is dropping. So keywords you would see is acidemia. That is indicative that the pH is too low, pH below 7.35. That is our cutoff for starting to see, oh crap, that's too low. Um, and then we'll see that this is normally happening secondary to diabetic ketoacidosis. This is the acidosis that's happening with the body. So too much buildup of ketones, increasing the amount of acidity in the blood that's just causing problems. Remember the blood is very sensitive to changes in pH. Any changes that are negative are going to throw everything out of whack. Therefore the body's going to try to reverse everything by hyperventilating, going through respiratory alkalosis uh, to try to uh, raise the blood pH back up. And we'll see that any arterial gas level, blood gas levels that were obtained, we'll be able to see kind of what's going on pH level. The patient having vomiting, confusion, visual changes, any sort of, you know, alteration of consciousness. So like that generally is cause for concern, bad. Let's go get this checked out. An over excretion of uh, bicarbonate, that's what HCO3 negative is, um, which therefore then we're going to have too much hydrogen ions, which is going to be acidic. This is all that chemistry stuff that we were forced to learn. Too much hydrogen is going to make the body acidic, which is bad. We need to neutralize it with a base. So sample question, guys, this is how it'll all come together that we'll see it. So a physical therapist assistant is treating a patient diagnosed with type two diabetes mellitus in an inpatient long-term care facility. The patient exhibits a blood pH of 7.33, is hyperventilating, and is complaining of blurred vision. What condition most likely is causing this presentation? One, respiratory acidosis, lactic acidosis, three, ketoacidosis, or four, hypoglycemia. So we'll go through those again. Number one is respiratory acidosis. Number two is lactic acidosis. Number three is ketoacidosis, or four is hypoglycemia. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, so the answer is ketoacidosis, number three. So what do we see? we got a patient with type 2 diabetes. That's one of our patients that could be at risk for metabolic acidosis. Um, they have a blood pH of 7.33. Okay, so they're in metabolic acidosis. Not good at all. They're hyperventilating. We can see that that's kind of happening because they're trying to throw themselves into the respiratory alkalosis. They're complaining of their blurred vision. Um, we're seeing they're having all those signs and symptoms of metabolic acidosis. Okay, what's conditions most likely causing this presentation? So we don't see metabolic acidosis on here, um, but the patient is in metabolic acidosis. But what probably caused it? Most likely using our context clues. Well, we see that, um, let's go through these, respiratory acidosis. So if they're in respiratory um, acidosis, that's more associated with metabolic alkalosis. I know it's confusing. The respiratory and metabolics are associated with the opposite one. It's confusing. So we have our patient in metabolic acidosis, which therefore would be associated with respiratory alkalosis. So that is not an option on here. So therefore, number one is wrong. Lactic acidosis, we're not seeing anything to indicate that there's an increase in lactic acid buildup with this patient. There's no context clues, no keywords, no anything. We would have to make up a scenario to make this true. So therefore, I would not pick that answer. Number three, ketoacidosis. Okay, that is a complication of type two diabetes. It is very likely that maybe this is the reason why the patient is having these symptoms due to the fact that they are a type two diabetic. This is very common to happen with these patients. Not good at all. Let's just check number three. Number three says hypoglycemia. A patient would not be entering any sort of metabolic acidosis with hypoglycemia. They would just be entering a coma. Um, hyperglycemia is what go is going to inevitably trigger ketoacidosis, which is going to trigger metabolic acidosis. So therefore, our answer of what most likely would be causing this condition would be ketoacidosis due to its association with type 2 diabetes and having hyperglycemic episodes. I hope this was helpful. This is really confusing. It confused me the first time. I'm still not sure if like I have a full grasp on this, like in the big scheme of things, I at least know enough for the boards though. And this is really all you need to know. The pH is getting lower. It's associated with conditions like diabetes. It's going to cause problems with your, you know, blood levels. Like this is the main thing that's going to be going on. And then the body kicks into respiratory alkalosis to try to correct. All right, guys, hope that that was helpful. And please let me know if you have any questions about this. There will be another video on metabolic alkalosis next. Thank you. Take care.